One of the major reasons that the check engine light comes on is because the fuel cap isn't tight enough. If the light comes on, tighten the fuel cap properly and drive for at least a day and see if the light goes off. This is a quick and easy way to determine one of the most likely causes of the check engine light being on. When the check engine light is on, typically mechanics will do the diagnostic check for free. But if the diagnostic code received requires more work to diagnose the actual problem, it can cost quite a bit. I had the experience of being offered the diagnostic check for free, but once the code was received, I was told it would cost $99 to further diagnose the issue if the code indicated a variety of possible faults. So then you're paying $99 and the cost of paying for whatever is needed plus labor cost. If the problem was the fuel cap not being tightened, you could have saved the time by doing the simple check up front by tightening it and seeing if the light eventually goes off. I have a 2015 Malibu and I thought the fuel cap was tight enough but then the check engine light came on and it turns out I had to tighten the cap a little bit more. Even though the cap says tighten until one click or the service engine light may come on, I had to tighten it a little bit more for another click to eventually get the light to turn off after about a day. So I guess this cap is probably getting a little weak and since the car is going on five years, maybe the cap should be uh, replaced at some point in the future as well. This is the top five lists of uh, uh, items that need to be uh, typically looked at if your check engine light comes on. This figure is supplied by AutoZones. I'm going to give credit to them in the description of the video here. Uh, also, you may want to take a look at this on a, on a larger uh, monitor rather than your smartphone. You may not be able to pick up all the detail that this figure shows on your smartphone. But anyway, the number one item, as it says here, is your oxygen sensor needs to be replaced. And uh, I've had to replace my oxygen sensor at least once on a previous car I had on a Grand Prix. And uh, it says here your oxygen sensor measures the amount of unburned oxygen in your vehicle's exhaust system. And the engine won't burn properly, of course, if the oxygen sensor is faulty. Then number two is the gas cap issue, damaged or missing, which needs to be replaced. And it says here that um, uh, your gas cap seals the fuel system and helps maintain pressure within the fuel tank. So, of course, this is, this is typically what uh, happens with the check engine light being on. So this is something to watch out for. Then it also indicates that you could have a bad catalytic converter. It says your catalytic converter helps protect the environment by converting harmful carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and um, uh, it says if if you don't replace it you'll experience reduced performance and fuel economy the uh, fourth item is the mass airflow sensor or MAF sensor which maps um, uh, mass airflow sensor measures the amount of air entering the engine to determine how much fuel is needed to run the engine efficiently and then finally the fifth item is uh, your vehicle needs new spark plugs or plug wires could be another possibility as to why uh, the check engine light comes on and then it says here your spark plugs ignite the uh, air fuel mixture and I think most everybody knows what spark plugs do and what the issues could be regarding that but typically when the gas cap is loose or damaged the uh, engine will still sound as if it's running properly while some of these other items if they're faulty you're gonna hear most likely a, a degradation of the engine Also, there's the difference between a check engine light which is continually on, which could indicate a less serious issue than one that is flashing. If it's flashing, it could indicate a uh, misfire that's going on, and it could be much more dangerous for the engine. So then you need to see a mechanic much more quickly as well. Of course, these five items here aren't completely exhaustive. This is just a typical example of the five most common issues. There are many other uh, codes as well, which correspond to a variety of, of other faults. Regarding that P0171 error code, I recently had a situation where the check engine light went on and the engine sounded perfectly fine. It didn't have any sputtering or didn't have any loss of uh, power or anything like that. So I took it into the dealership and uh, after about three or four hours, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And they, luckily, they didn't charge me anything. Then I decided a day or so later to go to Tires Plus and uh, they did the same thing. They looked at it for like three or four hours, you know, because the check engine light was on. And... Uh, 
they reset the check engine light and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it either. And what they did is they gave me a list of possible culprits for that uh, a P0171 error code. And um, uh, the list of culprits that they listed are indicated right here. The first list of items here are what a lot of people I think have already seen, like vacuum operated engine mount system, vacuum hose or line, maybe damaged, fuel injector. Uh, this fuel level low I thought was a little unusual. That's not the, uh, the answer to my particular problem, but it's something to uh, remember in the future. And of course, the mass airflow sensor could be, could be uh, something that needs to be serviced. But actually, one item on the second list is something that uh, got my attention. When I took a look at the items on this uh, second list, going down to the fifth item here, this fuel quality, I began to realize that a short time before the check engine light went on, I went to a different gas station and it filled up. And then shortly after that, the check engine light went on. So I thought, well, even though the engine sounds fine, maybe a fuel quality is the problem. So I went back to a different station after uh, the uh, tank had gone down to about halfway or so and, and put some gas in. And within a day or so, the light went off. So actually, in my case, it was a fuel quality issue that uh, had caused the problem. And given the fact that the engine didn't indicate any problem because it sounded fine, was kind of a mystery for the mechanics because they couldn't figure out what it was. So if I didn't have this this expanded list from uh, Tires Plus at the time, I probably never would have completely figured out really what it could be. So I thought this could be something that other people may uh, I think is useful to them as well because uh, Tires Plus gave me a expanded list over some of the other culprits that I've seen on websites as to what could be involved with P0171. So there's that. If it's decided the MAF sensor really is a problem and is responsible for rough engine performance, I'm going to go through some information as to where the MAF sensor is located on the 2015 Malibu as an example. I'm not going to physically remove the sensor, just go into some highlights as to its location, how to remove and clean it, and information how to get another sensor if that's what you decide to do. The location of the sensor is right here where the arrow indicates. It's right along the airflow, or just past the air filter. Here's a closer view of the MAF sensor. A lot of videos regarding MAF sensor cleaning don't disconnect the battery, but this is something that should be done prior to any electrical repair on the car, so I'm including it here. The first thing you want to do in the case of the Malibu is remove the battery cover. Once that's done, loosen the nut holding the negative terminal so you can remove the negative cable. I'm just showing this with my fingers, but obviously you'd use a wrench for this. I'm just showing that once the nut is loosened, you can remove the cable and put it to the side. In the case of this battery, you can only move it a few inches because other connectors are attached to the negative cable as well. Put something between the cable and the negative post to make sure that they don't touch. Move over to the MAF sensor and disconnect the wiring harness. There's a red plastic clip in my case that you move to the left in this picture and then you can remove the harness from the plug on the MAF sensor. There's a couple of torque screws holding the sensor in place as shown here. You'll need a Torx driver similar to what I have here which is part of this multi-driver kit. The MAF sensor on the Malibu is going to look similar to this. It's a few inches long. The port where the electrical connector is located is on the top right, as you can see here. You can see the screw hole connector is on the left, and the sensor is at the bottom. Never touch the bottom of the sensor, and hold it by the top part at all times. Always use MAF sensor cleaner. Never use anything else. This spray is especially formulated to clean the sensor and dry quickly in about 10 minutes. You spray at least two or three times with each spray being about three to five seconds to clean the sensor thoroughly. When the sensor is dry, reinstall it, tighten the torque screws and reattach the wiring harness. Go to the battery and reconnect the negative cable. Put the battery cover back on and you're good to go. 
If you decide that you need to replace the MAF sensor, you can get some information on replacement parts from a variety of sites. I'm just using AutoZone as an example in this video. It turns out that AutoZone.com has a pretty good website for getting replacement parts, like in this case for the 2015 Chevrolet Malibu mass airflow sensor. You can set up your tabs here and see what particular uh, MAF sensor is applicable. In my case, it would be 2015 Chevrolet under model. I would pick a Malibu LT under engine, uh, four-cylinder, 2.5 liter. You click on Add Vehicle, and it comes up with different uh, MAF sensors which are compatible. And you can scroll on down. There is one from Duralast, one from Delphi, one from AC Delco. Different prices are listed here. So you can pick on one, for example, if you decide to replace rather than clean the uh, mass airflow sensor. And you can see what it looks like here. In this example, I did a Google search initially for MAF sensors for my make and model of car. In the next example, you can go to AutoZone.com and just drill down from there. There's a couple of different ways to get to that particular area of this website. Here, if you go just to AutoZone.com, under Auto Parts here, you can come on down and go over to uh, engine management, which is right here, right about in the middle of all categories. You click on that. That brings up this page. On the left side, under sensors, you can click on the plus sign here. It'll expand all the sensors up. And uh, let's scroll down a little bit here. And right down here it says mass airflow sensor. It says three of them. So you click on that. And it brings up this. Then it says recommended for your 2015 Chevrolet Malibu LT. And it has these same three sensors right at this point here. The uh, onboard diagnostic trouble codes, or OBD trouble codes, I've uh, placed a link down in the descriptor of this uh, video as well for all these. You can search different trouble codes. There's the entire list of trouble codes are specified on uh, this uh, repairpal.com website that I've specified a link for. So you can put in a, a specific trouble code that you found and see what possible uh, 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 items correspond to that trouble code. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope you find this uh, informative, so thank you very much for watching. Have a good day now.